Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another morning pocket dump for you. Today, uh, I'm feeling a little classier today. I have to go out and run some errands. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be allowed to do that. With the lockdown and stuff pending, looming over our heads, I'm sure we're going to get locked down again with the virus. So um, I wanted to you know, look a little better, but also, uh, much like 17th century French architecture, I am Baroque. At the moment because it's Christmas I'm spending money on other people so I wanted to carry some kind of less expensive stuff and, and show you guys like you don't have to spend a whole ton of money and, and look at look a little classy so uh yeah that's what I'm doing today so let's get to it first up the watch this is the Orient Bambino uh the Gen 2 this is the rose gold version um it does have an aftermarket strap this is from i think it was called time for best on uh, amazon it's not like a particular like hugely known reputable brand or anything but this is pretty nice like a buckskin sort of looking leather i got it uh for two reasons one the bambino if it has one flaw it's that it has a 21 millimeter uh, strap with bracelet with you know um so it's a little hard to find for, I don't think it's as hard as everybody makes it out to be, a little hard to find the, the one that you want. And this came with a rose gold clasp, which I wanted to match, you know, the watch. So um, that's why I went with this one. But I think it looks really cool. I know there's a proper word for it, but I like these ones with the little stitch on them. Dresses it down a little bit. Like today, I'm not, I'm not like wearing a suit. You know, I'm just wearing like a, a, a decent long sleeve, you know, Henley and a um, you know, jeans. So uh, I don't want to look that fancy, but, uh, it, it, you can dress it down a little bit. I, I will say, um, that you're hundred, about a 120, I think this one was 118, something like that. If you shop around, you can find a Bambino, um, Gen 2 for, oh, for under a hundred. Um, I really wanted the rose gold one because I had gotten the yellow gold one previously and I did not like the way it looked. I thought it looked really cheap. So, um, I sold it to a buddy who, doesn't think it looks cheap, and then I, I got the rose gold one. Uh, but they have so many different colors and variations of the Bambino. It is an excellent starter, like, automatic watch. This is the closest I own to a dress watch. Um, uh, I, I'm just not in super into uh, dressy-looking watches usually, but the Bambino, you can dress down a little bit, like, you know, change the strap. And they have a really cool one that I've almost bought, to, just as an everyday watch, that has a uh, dark, like, slate gray face. And, uh, you know, normal, just stainless steel, like brushed stainless steel case. I've been really thinking about getting one of those because it just is a, in that, it just looks like an everyday tool watch. So, um, yeah, the Bambino, there's so many versions. They change personality depending on what you get. Orient's a great company. Let's move on. Uh, it is cold out again, so I need the, I need my lips moisturized. So I'm back with the Burt's Bees in the pocket almost every single day. This is the Vanilla Bean. Uh, I actually maybe very slightly prefer the plain honey one that doesn't taste or smell like anything, but the vanilla bean is quite pleasant, and uh, it, it seems to be easier to find than the plain honey stuff is. It used to be this was really hard to find. Now it's um, it's switched back to where the honey is really hard to find again. I don't like pepperminty stuff at all, and the, the regular Burt's Bees flavor is pepperminty, so I don't usually use that. I either get the plain honey or the vanilla bean. Burt's Bees, awesome stuff. Uh, seem like a pretty cool company. I don't know a ton about them, but I don't know. They seem pretty all right. Uh, next up, Parker Jotter pen. Less than $10. They're just kind of iconic. I think if you were remotely into pens, you should have one of these just to, just to try one out. I bought this at like Staples. They're around everywhere. Uh, I just, I just, I like it. It's a really nice little pen. And a lot of people think they're very expensive and they're not. Like I said, this is less than 10 bucks. It's just, I think as, uh, normies you pick up a pen that's you know metal and you know probably your first experience with like a metal decent pen was a parker jotter it's a good good shout that it was and uh it's it, you think they're expensive they're not they're very inexpensive like it's it, it a lot of people think these are like you know 50 60 bucks and yeah it's, it's eight dollars um i'm going to show you the pen that i almost carried today because i it's funny um the only thing cheaper than an eight dollar nice pen is a free one and this is my favorite free pen that i've ever gotten i'm not sure if i should call it free or stolen but i don't know what the statute of limitations are so we're going to call it free but uh this is uh i believe also made by parker but i'm not 100 percent sure uh but this is a stolen pen from the waldorf astoria hotel um i, I miss going to new york every now and then and i usually stay at the waldorf because it's uh, 
if you shop around online, it's not horribly expensive. And I would rather stay in a tiny little closet of a room at a fancy historic hotel than to stay at a mid-level room in a chain hotel. So uh, I do stay at the Waldorf when I go to New York. And, and it's just cool if you get in a cab to tell the guy to meet at the Waldorf. It's, I Yes, the room is tiny, but you know what? I, I put my hand on a handrail that Bogey touched. So it's cool. Uh, the Waldorf is one of my favorite places in the world. And uh, yeah, of course, obviously really nice bar and everything. But yeah, this I stole this from the Waldorf the last... No, probably the first time I stayed there, honestly, actually. As far as um, hotel pens go, it's very nice. It's, it's metal. It has some weight to it. I, I think it's a Parker. I can't remember who makes it. It's a Parker or a Cross. It's one of those two. But for a, for a hotel pen, it's pretty great. And it says Waldorf on it, so... Whenever this thing is over with, I need to go back so I can get more of these. And I didn't take this from the room. I actually I took it from the concierge desk. So it's a, it, it may be a little nicer than the ones in the room. I don't remember. But um, yeah, it was, it was a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a free pen, officer. I assumed it was free. Uh, next up, the Black Fox Bean Gen 2. Have not had this on the channel in an eon, uh, but I do still own it. Um, I, I think this was about $40. It's listed as 60 on the Boker website, but I, I I think it was less than that. That's the first place it came up when I searched for it this morning to find a price, but I don't think it was 60 bucks when I got it. Um, olive wood, 440C blade, uh, Serge Perchenko design, uh, little double detent slip joint. Um, I like it a lot. One hand open. I did take the pocket clip off because it's so small. It's easier just to drop it in that fifth pocket. It doesn't need a pocket clip, but um, I, it's a really cool little knife. Uh, absolutely for sure. Not the best slicer in the world. Pretty thick blade stock for uh, for its size. And, uh, and if I remember correctly, pretty thick behind the edge, but it's fine for little tiny cutting tasks. And it looks great. It does come in stuff other than the wood. It comes in other finishes as well. But I just think it looks cool. And uh do like the little Bean Gen 2. Uh, the primary knife, not a big one today at all. This is the CGRB Small Feldspar. Um, carrying this for two reasons. First of all, it's brown G10 with these cool looking brass collars. Kind of matches the aesthetic today. Uh, but also... It is a contender for my budget knife of the year, so I, I wanted to to get it back in my pocket. I'm trying to do that this month with a lot of the contenders for stuff, especially in the budget category, just to kind of reacquaint myself with them. Because honestly, I don't I don't carry my budget knives as much as I used to, so um, uh, I guess I've become a bit of a snob. I need to work on that. But So I'm trying to get back in touch with some of the budget contenders just to remind myself of why they're on the list. I already have the top 10 pretty much settled, but I don't know what order they're going to land. And um, so I'm trying to get stuff back in my pockets. And, and the Feldspar's a great knife. D2 Steel, 36 bucks. Uh, I like this brown G10 one. Comes in a whole bunch of different things. Comes in micarta, all kinds of stuff. Um, many, many G10 colors. But uh, yeah, and it comes in a full size. Like I said, this is the small. I had them both. Uh, I preferred... I prefer the small. Um, it's it just it fits my hands just fine, and as far as bigger stuff, I feel like I have. It, when you look at the large feldspar, I feel like I have more stuff that that outmatches it. The smaller one, uh, much less so, uh, in that kind of size category in that price range. So, um, yeah, I, I really love the uh, the small feldspar. Go check that one out. Thirty six bucks. Like I said, it's gonna be spoiler. It's gonna be in my top ten knives under 100 bucks uh list but i just don't know where it's gonna fall yet but i uh, just wanted to carry it again to, uh, to get another feel for it so i hope you guys have enjoyed this this is my my uh my classy poor carry i guess is what i'm gonna call it so if you are also a classy poor then i, I hope you have enjoyed this uh or if, or if you're a, a regular poor aspiring to be classy then maybe you will enjoy this so peasants unite i've been brian have a good one